Everybody, it's Pastor Kevin here. It's Mother's Day. So if you're tuning in on Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day. If it's not Mother's Day when you're tuning in, still happy Mother's Day. We love our moms. We love the ladies who birthed us and take care of us and or adopted us and those who fostered us. I mean, depending on your situation, so many amazing moms out there, spiritual moms, discipling other women and men. Oh, so good. We just love our moms. We honor you today. We love you. I have a great mom. I do, I do. And I honor her. Her name is Judy. And so thanks, mom, for loving me and taking care of me all these years and putting up with me, all of it. Anyway, today we're starting a new series, too, called Let's Talk Relationships. And part one, the title of this message is A Foundational Gift, A Foundational Gift. I want to talk to you about something I like to talk about about once a year. And it's this, it's this thing called honor, honor. Yeah, and, and it's so key to a healthy relation to healthy relationships because healthy relationships don't just happen. Healthy relationships need to be nurtured, and uh, and I think we would all agree that relationships are a part of every part of our lives. They're foundational to every area, from our friends and family and every place of influence, every place of, that we go. There's people, people involved, and um, and so and we're designed for it. We're designed for it, and I love what Romans twelve says, twelve ten rather. It says love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other right so this is this is the context this is in this great passage about being transformed and your thinking being transformed and renewed and then it's a list list of giftings and in at, at the end of this gift list it says this love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other so how, how do we define honor? Let me give you a simple definition to value, to treat as precious or weighty. And then it, it really honor is a gift. It's a gift. When you honor someone, uh, you, are, you are giving them a gift. And it's a gift really that comes from God. And because of God giving it to us, we can then give it to others. And, uh, and we can, because God values us, he created us, he made us in his image. Because he values us, we can then value others because we're all made in his image. And so that's incredible. Now, I, I was thinking about this and I was thinking, okay, I was thinking of the early years uh, when I was a kid. I remember one of, the, one of the sayings my dad said was, when someone was wearing a nice pair of sunglasses, he'd say, nice shades. He'd say, nice shades, nice shades. Now. You know, I don't know, it felt normal as a kid just to call sunglasses shades. <laughs> it did. And so, but, but honor, when you honor someone, it's, it's having, it's, it's like having God shades. Uh, where, and, and so it's, it, what it does is it flavors your perspective. It gives you uh, and enhances the truth. And when I wear these sunglasses outside, it, it's amazing how the colors are brighter. Things have more depth. Uh, it, it does make a difference. And so, uh, so I have this little statement here that God's shades give us his truth tint. God's shades give us his truth tint. Because the truth is, when we're just wearing our normal glasses our nor or just have our normal lenses in, <laughs> the ones that God gave you or the ones you have to have to enhance what God gave you, um, you, you don't always see truth. Sometimes you see falsely. Sometimes you see only what's on the surface. You don't, don't see potential. You don't see how God originally designed the situation or that person. And so when we honor people, even those we disagree with, the truth tint, this is going to be a lot of switching back and forth. The truth tint is this, is that honor acknowledges what? The image of God in each other, in each person. These truth tint, these lenses, these God shades, they also give us eyes of faith to recognize that that person is on a journey. They're on a journey. They're on a journey that just like all of us are on a journey. So when we're honoring this gift we're given called honor that God gave to us, we can give to others, it helps us have eyes of faith. We, we put our God shades on, it, it does. We can see with faith, we can honor the image of God in that person. We're acknowledging, God, you value them because you made them. You honor me because you made me. I'm going to honor just like you do. And then and this last one is this, is that honor sees with, it sees glimpses of what God sees. When, when we have our God shades on, which we should always have them on, <laughs> right? When we have these on, all of a sudden we start to see truth. We start to see glimpses of what God sees in that person. Because sometimes it's hard to see 
truth in other people. It's hard to honor other people because we think, yeah, but their behavior, the stuff they're doing is awful or horrible. It's sometimes evil. I mean, how do we honor them? Well, because honor is a gift, uh, we can do it. Uh, it. It takes faith. It takes God helping us. Some people are easier to honor than others, but really, if we have our God lenses on, our God shades on, we can, we can make that choice. And, that, and that's really the next thought is that honor is a choice. It doesn't really come naturally. It, it's a commitment we make to do. We, 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 choose, to, we choose to honor. Um, and it first starts by honoring God, by valuing the precious and weightiness of God and the precious weightiness and value in others. And so it starts with God. Matter of fact, 1 Timothy 1.17 says this, all honor and glory to God forever and ever. He's the eternal king, the unseen one who never dies. He alone is God. Amen. I mean, all honor and glory to God. That's where it starts. You choose that first. You, you make a choice. I'm going to honor God, right? It's putting him first. It's seeking first the kingdom of God and the king and his kingdom first. And when you and I do that, that gift grows and our shade, our God shades begin to take root and we start to see people differently. We start to see life differently. And so we honor, we honor God by honoring the gift of Jesus. We honor God by honoring his word, right? The, and, and submitting to it and obeying it and aligning our lives with the truths in it. It's amazing how when we seek God first and honor him in everything, then everything else starts to align. And here's the other truth is that if you, if you take a look through the whole of the Bible, what you'll notice is that as you're honoring God first, that first, then all, it's, as a matter of fact, that's Matthew 6, 3, 3. You seek first his, king, his kingdom, then all these other things will be added unto you. What starts happening is favor and blessing start to flow in your life. You position yourself, in a sense, under the faucet of God's grace <laughs> by honoring him, putting it, having him be in the right place, the perfect place, the first place. Not you, not any other situation, not any religion, not any other, no, just God, the creator of all things. You put him in first place, then all of a sudden, everything else starts to align. And he aligns, his blessing and favor will start to flow. As a matter of fact, favor and blessing follow honor. Favor and blessing follow honor. Now, does that mean everything's going to go perfect in your life? I didn't say that, but you position yourself and, and posture yourself where his favor and blessing will flow. And, and, and that's part of the, back to last week's message, it, it, part of the issue is, is when you're giving in to the temptations of the enemy and distracted, what you're doing is you're not, in a sense, um, posturing and positioning yourself uh, in, in, you're getting distracted, you're getting off course. And what it does is just opens up opportunities for the enemy to just distract you and get you knock you knock you around and you want to stay under the favor and blessing of God and so and, and we see this all throughout the Bible I mean Abraham he he honored God and and God you know incredible things through Abraham right the Abrahamic blessing I mean incredible father of many nations I mean Noah Noah didn't he didn't see he didn't even know what an ark was he didn't know what a flood was yet he stepped out in faith honored God and did what God asked him to do. And then recently we've been looking uh, in our Compelled to Go series at the, the story of Nehemiah, and it's incredible what Nehemiah did. I mean, God honors and favors, his blessing and favor flows through Nehemiah's life because Nehemiah was willing to say yes to what God asked him to do. And then God opens the doors with the king and the leaders in Jerusalem, and all of a sudden, in 52 days, he leads the whole city to rebuild the wall and get the gates in place. Incredible, incredible story of leadership. So amazing. So honor, it's a choice. First thing is to honor God, right? And, and honor, and then honor God and live that out. It'll be lived out in how you honor other people. One of the ways you know you honor God is by honoring other people. And so, and that's clear because when, when Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment? He, you know, he basically said in simplified version, love God, love people. Love God, love people, right? And, and, and when you're loving people, you're loving your neighbor, right? You're loving people you don't even know. You're, you're loving the guy on the street that's asking for a handout. 
You're loving the poor, you're loving the orphan, you're loving the widow, you're loving the rich, you're loving people in all socioeconomic places. You're loving people because they're people, they're God's people, they're made in his image, they're his creation. Whether they know it or not, they're his creation. And there's potential, the God potential in them is what you start to see with when you have the God shades on. When you get the God shades on, you start to see differently. And so, and scripture talks about so much about honor over and over again. And, and it's amazing when we start to exercise the stewardship of the things God's given us, we're honoring him by exercising that stewardship. All of a sudden he provides additional things for us to steward and, and, and his favor again and his blessings start to flow. One of the areas he asks us to honor him in is our marriages and you know, honor your marriage vows, honor your, your spouse. And, and that's, you know, Hebrews 13 talks about that and, and there's blessing there. And when you honor your father and mother, as a matter of fact, Ephesians 6, one to two is talking about honoring your father and mother, referring back to the, the Ten Commandments. And as a matter of fact, look at that on the screen. Ephesians 6, one to two says, children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. Ah, I love it, honor your father and mother. Now, and, and maybe you're a, if you're a young person here, uh, tuning in or a kid, you might go, or a teenager, you might go, oh, Ke Pastor Kevin, ah, you don't know, my parents are crazy. They drive me crazy, I mean, ah. Well, they, they probably have moments where you drive them crazy as well. So I guess you're on the same <laughs> playing field, all right? But I get it. I mean, because sometimes you go, it's, it, Kevin, it's hard to honor them because I think they're crazy. And, but here's what the truth is, and I believe why the Bible says this, is when you and I practice at a young age honoring our parents, our fathers and mothers, and those authorities in our life, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're exercising muscles of of which God, truth that God has actually called us to, is we're honoring authority in our lives. And we're, as long as they're not doing, uh, asking us to do something that's unbiblical or harmful to ourselves or others, that, that obedience to what's being asked all of a sudden begins to create a pattern of, of healthy flexing and, um, and sets us up for a, a life of favor and blessing. And so, so actually, matter of fact, and what it does is it resists this rebelliousness that, that the enemy wants to distract us with. Um, and, and a lot of it's because we're, oh, well, I'm a victim and I'm gonna rebel against this, I'm not gonna honor. But remember, honor is a gift, but I also, I also get the tensions in this because uh, sometimes you go, Kevin, I, I can't honor that person. I mean, they're a scoundrel, they're awful, they're, they're abusive, they're terrible. I'm going to talk about that here in just a second, but I want, I want to say this to you. Honor is given, but respect is earned. Just like, just like forgiveness is given and trust is earned. You can give honor as a gift, but to respect that person, meaning you approve of their behavior, uh, or the behavior is good, and, and your opinion and perspective of them has grown, there's been consistency and integrity in their life, that's, that's where respect comes in. But you're, what you're doing when you honor someone is you're, you're acknowledging they're made in God's image, they're valuable, they're precious in God's sight, even if their behavior doesn't align with that. It's seeing beyond the, seeing beyond the, the surface or the, the behavior. And that, that's tough to do, I get. It's tough to do in those situations where it is tough to do. That's where you gotta go, especially gotta go, God, I need you to help me with this because I, I don't know if I can honor them. But we, that's how we can honor our, our fathers and mothers, even when those situations are maybe estranged or difficult. And, um, and so, but just like forgiveness, forgiveness is given. Um, we don't give forgiveness when, when everything feels good. We choose by faith to forgive. Um, and we may, we may have no reason to trust that person, but you can forgive them, which is you're releasing them to God. You're saying, God, flow through me here. Give me grace to forgive. Let them go let them in your hands you take care of them you work on them and so it's this gift given in a relationship but remember the god shades give us his truth tint and and i know what i'm what i'm saying here is it feels a little countercultural and and i would agree with that but that's this is this is god's economy not not the world's economy all right this is god's economy and so you start to see things with his lenses it really changes things so when we honor people we're again seeing with eyes of faith we're we're seeing more as God sees, right? We're getting glimpses of what God sees in that other person, and we're seeing the image of God in them. And, and I, I think it's important to say what honor is not here, okay? Let me, let me say this to you. Honor is not staying in an abusive relationship. 
Honor is not uh, remaining unsafe. Right, and, and uh, so there's so many dynamics here and so many different scenarios. But if you're physically unsafe, then you, you need to physically remove yourself from the situation, right? And, and, I, and I mentioned earlier, you know, having the honor is having eyes of faith. Um, and one way you can honor someone, even that is abusive, is get yourself physically safe first. Um, but you can honor them by saying, God, I acknowledge that what that person is doing, it's clear that's wrong, but I acknowledge that you made them and created them, and so I'm gonna trust that you can work on their life, right? And, and hear me, if this person in your life is abusive or unsafe, it's not your job to fix them, it's not your job to change them. You give that person to God, you go, God, I trust you with them, you take them. And, and another way you can honor, um, have eyes of faith and honor a person that's, that maybe doesn't in the natural seem to deserve it is by releasing the bitterness, by releasing the bitterness of the offense. And um, again, that's not agreeing that what they did to you or anyone else was okay. You, but you're saying, God, I acknowledge that you're bigger than me and I give you my bitterness, I give you my offense because I'm not designed to hold on to it. It's gonna hurt me and I'm gonna trust you with them. I'm just gonna give them to you. You take care of them. It's, it's, you can honor another person even just by not speaking poorly about them, even when they've hurt you. Um, and, um, and you can honor them by praying for them. Uh, yeah, so the, I, I realize this is, a, difficult. Every scenario, I know plenty of scenarios that are just so, so hard. And so, but you can honor the scripture and honor God's word by doing these, these things I'm mentioning, by praying for that person, by not, by really guarding what you say um, about them and not, you know, slandering them or gossiping about them, but also uh, by releasing the forgiveness and the bitterness that maybe is beginning to take grip in your heart. Yeah, and, and God wants to bring healing in your life as well. And so um, it, it's, it's, it's just, I realize it's challenging and I'm gonna pray. Matter of fact, I'm gonna pray for you right now, Lord. There's so many people uh, tuning in that that's their situation. There are, uh, so many people have been hurt or are unsafe and God, we ask for protection. I ask they'd release the, the unforgiveness and the bitterness to you. God, I, I pray that God, that you would help their, their mouths to be, um, full of encouragement uh, towards others and even to honor those who cause pain uh, by, by just giving them to you in prayer. Thank you for that, Jesus. Amen. So, so I, I want to I talk about one, a couple more things here, but one of the things that honor does is honor sets the stage for the miraculous. It, it's interesting, and as I was thinking about our vision that I just rolled out, I was like, imagine at River City just a, a culture uh, of honor that's better, where we honor that Imago Dei, the image of God in other people, where we honor the, um, the, the glimpses, the, the potential that God has in each person, what they're currently walking out, but also what, what's to come. We start to have eyes of faith, and I, I think we're gonna be blown away. As a matter of fact, it's interesting that in Mark 6, 4 to 6, Jesus, he, he talks about this, uh, this situation where he goes home to Nazareth, and I was watching this recently in The, the Chosen, we were as a family, and this, this depicted in the narrative. And uh, let's look at this scripture, it says, then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them. Now, if we just stop right there, you go, man, couldn't do any miracles among them. That's terrible. Man, that unbelief must have been really bad. I love how it ends, though. It says, except, <laughs> couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Now, when I read this one, I'm just like, I'd be pretty good with a few healings, you know, lay hands on a few people and heal them. So, but what that tells me is Jesus had some other things in mind. There were some bigger miracles. There were some greater things he wanted to do that because of the, the dishonoring and the unbelief that was in the, the place there in Nazareth, in his hometown, it, it, it put a lid on what he wanted to accomplish that, at that visit. And I started thinking about that today. I was like, wow, or this week rather. And I'm like, man, I, I can't imagine that, Jesus, what you wanted to do there. I can't imagine that, Lord, it, it, as faith, as we have, as we're honoring others and our faith is stirred, 
that what, what miracles are you wanting to do? What miracles are you wanting to do? What, I, you know, like, frankly, I think we'd all be pretty excited if more people got healed. Well, I think that's just the beginning. Well, how about, how about more churches planted? How about more leaders developed? How about thousands of disciples made? Yeah. How about the 40,000 being reached? How about the 9 million being reached? How about going beyond the Northwest to the, the rest of the West Coast, to the Midwest, to the East Coast, to, the, to Canada, to the world? Ah, look what God could do. And when you and I practice in our own lives, honoring others, Honoring God first and honoring others and honoring them, it's amazing what happens. So the God shades give us his truth tent. Now, the second thing is this about honor is we need to honor with our words. The way we can honor is with your words. Honor with your words. And, um, and, and so look at Proverbs 18, 21. I, I put it here from New King James and the message. I like them both how they are stated. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits or its fruit rather. Uh, love that death and life are in the power of this little flangey thing in our mouths and uh, the words we say, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Ah, uh, okay, so look, what, look how the message paraphrase it. Words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit, you choose. Poison or fruit, you choose. So that means you and I get to choose the words which come out of our mouths every day, every situation. Now last week, I mentioned the elevator principle from John Maxwell. And I love I loved to talk about the elevator principle. I usually just kind of throw it in here and there, but it's just so, such a good visual for how you and I have the privilege every day of honoring others with our words. But also we have the, the, the responsibility to do that and the responsibility to know that, to, to weigh how much power our words have. And I think that's one of the things we do is we diminish the power of, of these things we speak over people. We just kind of minimize it. And so we're, we're just kind of sometimes just really flippant with our words. Sometimes we just say things not really meaning them or we just let stuff fly out. We don't have a filter. And, and that's why I like the elevator principle, right? That, that we can take people up or take them down with our words, take people up, or take people down. And so just envision yourself in every conversation that these, these words that you and I have in our mouths that we get to speak can cause life to spring forth or they can die, cause people to die. They can bring death, life, death, the proverb says. Life, death. I, just, it's, I think we need a revelation of how powerful God has made our words. God spoke things into, he spoke things into existence. He created with words and he gives us that, that uh, there's power behind our words that he's given us. And it's a beautiful thing, but used in the wrong way, it can destroy. And you've seen it, I've seen it, I've given words that were destructive and life-giving, and you have too. But let's be those that really think about what's coming out of our mouths, that we, that we realize that every day, I mean, the average person is speaking about 25,000 words a day, some more, <laughs> some less, right? I get that. But 20, if, if we're just taking the average of 25,000 words a day, a day, that's like 50, uh, what is that? Like 50 books a year could be written with the words that come out of your mouth every day. 50 books, 50 books, wow. That's a lot of words. It's a lot of words. And, and so I, I don't know if I want all those words published, but it would be good if our filter was so good that we could go, hey, I, I'm okay with it being published. <laughs> right? 25,000 words a day. Right? I know some that are 50,000, some that are 100,000. Sometimes that's me, a little wordy. All right? You might go, we know, Kevin, you're a preacher. All right, I get it. But this, how about this? That these words coming out of our mouth towards others in the relationships around us. I put this on the screen for you. Are my words reinforcing the enemy's lies or are they speaking God's truths? Are the words coming out of your mouth and my mouth, are they reinforcing the enemy's lies? The lies, you know, that the enemy whispers in people's minds like, you're worthless, you're nothing. You're not valued. Nobody even notices you're here. Nobody cares about you. I don't have any friends. You know, you, uh, you, you're, you'll never make it. You'll never overcome that addiction. You'll never, you'll never amount to anything. Like those lies from the enemy, are your words adding fuel to that? 
Or are your words lifting people up? Are your words taking people down or are they lifting them up? I, I think that's worth chewing on. And I think it's worth repenting of. The one, when we do the ones that are reinforcing lies. And I think when we're casual about our words, when we, when we aren't thinking about them, when we aren't praying, God, help me to be an encourager. Help me to do things that, that input positive deposits, not withdrawals. That makes a difference. You know, Jesus, he, he spoke to the storms and calmed them. He, he spoke to Lazarus and said, come forth out of that tomb, right? Even though the King James says he stinketh. <laughs> Love that. He, he calls Lazarus to come forth. And, and Jesus, he spoke into situations and peace came. By faith, he'll allow us to do those things. We can speak words of life that, that create peace, that God will use to create peace. We can speak words that, that calm, that by faith will calm storms, not add fuel. Let's be those people. God may ask you to pray for somebody, I mean, extreme situations, pray for somebody that is dead and they come back to life. That would be one of those miracles that would be fostered in an atmosphere of the miraculous, right? When we're honoring, I, I just, I, I've never seen it happen for me personally. I've heard of stories of people that this happened. But God, if that's what you want, if, if that person's not supposed to be gone, they're supposed to <laughs> still, they got more purpose on this planet than, hey, I'm in, I, I, I'll pray for them. That, uh, that takes faith guts, as they say, to do that. So Ephesians 4.29 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Le leave this on the screen, if you would, that it may benefit those who listen. So let the, let the talk, let the words not, not be corrupt or destructive, unwholesome, not, not helpful, not building. Let them, let, don't do that kind of talk. Do the talk that's helpful, that, that builds others up, that elevator up principle. And, and what, look what else it says. It says, according to their needs. So you need to know what their needs are, which is going to require you to ask a question to help engage and listen to see what's needed. What does that person need? You, you, sometimes you just have to ask, what do you need? Just like in Nehemiah's story, when the king says, well, you're sad and you're straught, tell me why. He tells him why. Then he says, what do you need? How can I help? Right? We, we need to ask, how do we build others up? We've got to know their need, and then we can help encourage them. Sometimes God will just supernaturally give you a, a word of encouragement because it's what they need. Be, in, be open to that. And that it would what? That it would benefit those who listen. So, so I think sometimes... It's just easy to think about the words you want to say, really, that are trying to just build you up in a conversation, which, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't encourage yourself in the Lord. That's scriptural as well. But when you're talking to somebody, one of the ways you can honor them is by not being self-focused, <laughs> is by actually being focused on them and listening to them and hearing them and then saying, God, give me the words that will help build up. I, I was thinking about this. I was thinking, what are, what are some powerful words that we could use in conversation that maybe we don't too much, maybe we don't often enough? And, and I put these on the screen for you. I think one of the most powerful things we can say is, please forgive me. Please forgive me. It's like you're really, you're saying, and when you and I ask for forgiveness, it, it creates the opportunity, the faith opportunity for life to come in a dead relationship. I, I think one of the most powerful things we can say is, I don't know. <laughs> you might go, really, Kevin? I, I, I was just thinking about this because I've, I've done it myself. I'm not proud of it. But when someone asks about something and you want to appear maybe smarter or more knowledgeable than you are. And so you go on and on about something that really you don't know anything about really, or you over inflate what you know about something because you, you know, you want to look good or you think, you think that's what you, <laughs> you think they're going to think you're look good if you do that. But how about we just start humble and go, you know what? That's a great question, but I don't know. What, what do you know about that? <laughs> or let's find out together. But you just, just to own where you're at, just to be real, just to be truthful, right? Don't lie, don't exaggerate, don't embellish. I, I think, how can I help is a great question to ask. It's great, powerful, those are powerful words. 
how about this? I'd, I'd love to hear how you're doing. If somebody gets on your elevator and they're like, hey, I don't know if you have time right now, but we should get together. I'd just love to hear how you're doing. You know what that does? That's so powerful. It just communicates and honors that person. It just says, I love you enough. I care about you enough. You might go, Kevin, I've never met him. I can't love him. Well, okay. I, I care about them enough to go, I'd love to hear how you're doing. And it's the power of really being heard. I tell you what, most people don't have someone to listen to them. They just want to be heard. And one of the ways you can really love and honor and value people is hear them out. Listen to them. Encourage them that way. And, um, and, and, and here's the last one. Uh, I own that. I own that. <laughs> uh, and I'll give you a story on this. Because recently, recently uh, around our kitchen table dinner at our house, this is just within the last month, we were having a good time. We were laughing and joking. And, and then we were, we were kind of being, there was a little bit of sarcasm flowing. And I was heavily involved in that sarcasm. And, and I was poking fun at, you know, um, poking fun at uh, a couple of the boy, the boys a little bit and, and uh, our boys. And, you know, it was, it was all in good fun, I thought. Um, but then, then all of a sudden Rowan goes, hey, Dad. I'm like, yeah. He's like, um, he goes, I just find, I think I was kind of picking on Aiden a little bit. And he said, I think it's, aren't you the one who, he goes, you're the one who tells us not to have humor at other people's expense. Oh man. And, and in that moment, I was like, you call, he called, he kindly, Rowan did it kindly. He kindly called me out and, um, and I was being loose with my lips. I was, I was not thinking about what I was saying. I, I was being inadvertently dishonoring. And so I was being dishonoring of Aiden in that, in that moment. And, and, and Rowan calls me out. And so now internally, the little wrestle in my head was, Hey, wait a minute. I'm the dad and you're the kid. What are you doing here? Like I had that thought. And then I felt like the Holy Spirit went, you should be proud of your son and you should own it because you, because he's calling you out on something you're doing wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, internally, I'm like, okay. So I just said, Rowan, you're right. I own that. Thank you for, thank you for pointing that out because that is duplicitous. That is, I'm, I'm not living what I encourage and I know to believe that is the truth. I should not be dishonoring to Aiden or anyone else. And, and I'm being loose with my comments and it's wrong. Please forgive me. And he did, and it was, it was good. But I, but I tell you what, that is one way we can really honor each other. And when we honor each other, and in this case, I honor, we honor our children. As a matter of fact, Ephesians 6, 4 says this. It says, fathers, don't provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. It, it's honor, doesn't, honor isn't just children honoring their parents. It's parents honoring their children. Just because someone's younger than you doesn't mean you shouldn't honor them. Just because they're your child, listen, own the fact that maybe you blew it. Or in this, in my case, I did blow it and I had to own it. I mean, I didn't have to, I guess, but if I was going to do the right thing, I had to. And I, and I, and I was, the Holy Spirit was convicting me. Yeah, this is good. And you want him to do this as he gets older as well, Kevin. You, you, you want to be a person that's not above being corrected, right? And so we honor each other and honor goes in every direction, right? 360. So remember, honor and value your kids. And so when we put our God shades on, right? We put our God shades on. God gives us the ability to see with eyes of faith. He gives us the ability to honor the Imago Dei, the image of God in each person. And also he gives us glimpses of what he sees. And, and I just want to encourage you with this as I wrap this up is that I think one of the ways we can, um, one of the ways we can get those eyes of faith fostered and know how to see glimpses of what God sees is in prayer, ask some really clear questions because as people get on your elevator and you can take them up, uh, we don't want to take them down. That's, it, you don't even have to try to come up with ways to do that. Just, just say, God, I, I want to hear how you want me to help take people up, right? Encourage them, build them up as Ephesians says there. And how do, how do I, God, how do I do that? What's one way? I, I put these questions, I think in prayer, just saying, God, what do you see in this person? And it put the name in there. What do you see in this child of mine? What do you, what do you see in this coworker? What do you see in this friend? Uh, what gifts have you put in them? God, what in this season, what words of encouragement do they need? Uh, 
You can do this in your family, you can do this in your workplace, you can speak life, you can take people up with just, just, I mean, I do this pretty regularly, just, just pray, ask God for those, ask some of those questions in prayer, and as God shows you something, shoot him a text, give him a call, write him an email, say it, it, whatever scenario they're in, just say, God, give me the opportunity to share that with them today. Bring me across their path. You'd be amazed at how God will use that honor. He'll use that encouragement to honor that person and it'll just so bless them. And, and I, I've had it happen enough to know that, listen, towards me and others, that God knows the timing. He knows the right, t- the right thing at the right time. So just, it'll be, a, it'll be a blast. It'll be an encouragement for them. And so let's practice these things. Let's realize that honor is a choice. Let's realize that we can honor with our words. It's a gift. It, it creates an atmosphere or, a, or a, a sets the stage for, the, for miracles, for healing, for, for salvation, for discipleship, for God to do the kingdom work in us and amongst us. So let me pray for you and I that we would get better at that. And it'll be key for us having healthier and healthier relationships. All right, let's pray. Jesus, would you help us, God? We just acknowledge and, and honor you today. Uh, God, that you're the, you're the creator of all things. You are the one who created relationships. You are a relational God. You're a sending God. You're a missionary God. You, you, you call us to help build others up, not let that yucky, unwholesome stuff come out, but to speak words of life. And so God, would you give us a Holy Spirit filter that we would, we would only let things come out of our mouths that are, that are encouraging and building others up, or truth, God, truth in love, and, um, and so let us have that filter, Lord. And I pray for each person listening that, Lord, you may even would nudge them today to call somebody, text somebody that needs a word of encouragement. God, show them a specific thing that would be just a, a perfect thing in the moment right now that, that person needs and, and help them follow through with it. So thank you, Lord. I, I, I pray for anybody here that maybe doesn't, is tuning in that may not know you yet. If you don't know Jesus, just, just this, I'll just pray this and agree with this prayer. It's an invitation to, to surrender your life to Christ. Dear Jesus, I, I surrender my life to you right now. I, I give you my everything. I've been trying to drive my life on my own independently. I see I need you. I surrender my life to you today in Jesus' name. Forgive me. I receive your love, your grace, your empowerment. Empower me by your spirit to walk this walk that you've called me to, this journey that I'm beginning today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Let's foster honor in our relationships, all right? Be blessed.